This is the uh, December 23rd meeting of the Conway Select Board. It's now 6 p.m. and we will call the meeting to order. Uh, we are be, being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents and uh, the public for later on. First item on the agenda is the minutes for December the 9th. Okay, I was not at that meeting. Did everybody review the minutes? They look great. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to make a motion, Bob? Uh, I move that we accept the minutes of December 9th. Yes. Okay. Good. That's uh, another stick. Good. Uh, next item on our agenda is the um, the warrants. We have a vendor warrant for. $548,119, and that's because of our our payment to uh, Frontier. We have a payroll warrant for $118,857. We have a payroll deduction warrant of uh, $29,307, and a student activity fund warrant for uh, $1,965. Make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. What do we have, Phil? Well, we had a timely snowstorm last week, which uh, resulted in the cancellation of many meetings, but still went to the uh, uh, planning board site review thing for the Growing Brook Road Cannabis Operation on the 19th. That was interesting. And the holiday party the same day. Um, aside from that, it was just many social engagements these past week in town. They're all wonderful. We don't have to include them. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Well, well, I can't say the same. So for me, it was a busy week for meetings, but... The way they are, and I mean, and you went to town meeting, which was who can forget that certainly included. And you know, I really want to congratulate and thank the town for passing and then passing the garage and for voting for it, for it on Thursday. So, uh, and it was for me, it was great to have it be overwhelming, you know, that it was, it was real support. Uh, so, I, I think everyone felt it's about time. And it is. So. Actually, if we're going back that far, so the 10th was a Frontier <coughs> Committee meeting, and there was a significant announcement that the uh, the new corporate overlords of Yankee Candle uh, made an additional donation to our public schools. So that was above and beyond the, they always, every year they do $20,000 in scholarships oh. for the graduating class. And um, they gave an additional donation, um, which could prove to be substantial, but they're actually concerned with how it's being used, so they're having input in that, all which is a really good thing. So, mm -hmm. okay. corporate donations should be noted. They're good things. Absolutely, sure, absolutely. So, in addition, I also we had a conservation commission meeting, but conservation commission is very slow right now. Not not a lot of building projects. Sure. Down. Yeah. Uh, we had a capital improvement commission meeting. Uh, we're making good progress on 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 our data sheets and looking at forecasting when we're going to be buying trucks and and just so we all understand how to how to even read and you know uh, how to enter data correctly into <coughs> all of our documents so that was good uh, what else so we had we had a cable uh, advisory board meeting so we're pretty much as a board we're all in agreement of what we're asking for for what we would hope that Comcast gives us for capital spending and for operating money for the next 10 years mm -hmm. and uh, Comcast is now pushing that up through their management and we will see what they come back with so good and uh, and let's see one more uh, oh at the marijuana planning meeting uh, the it, it was basically I think pretty well received there's a lot of people who worry that Something like marijuana is going to attract people to town who were might be interested in trying to steal a valuable crop, especially <coughs> right as the crop is mature and 
and, and, the, and there's a good discussion of the, the state law has a lot of rules about how the, how the crop is protected, mm -hmm. but not how the town is protected. Uh, you know, but to me it's really sort of something we could, if we talked about having a bank move into town, mm -hmm. would we worry that unsavory characters would come to rob the bank? And, you know, I mean, it was sort of the same idea, mm -hmm. you know, except, ex yeah. except the, the marijuana is right out there in public view, um, protected in, in the, this case by, a, you know, by an infrared camera system that would would alarm you would alarm you know the the farm if somebody was there that shouldn't be there mm -hmm. but it really would look like it's not very well protected and people might try to cut through the the, uh, the deer fence they have an electric deer fence to keep the deer out mm -hmm. um, and so <laughs> it was a, it was a good discussion to, but yeah. other, other than that you know they had great answers for everything um, how much water they're going to use and what they're going to use for fertilizers and things like that. Yeah. But so, and you know, it is just interesting. This is the very first craft marijuana farm in the state. So, so there's not history. So they're really precedent setting in what they're trying to do. I see. It was okay. good. Good. Okay. Um, we had a Franklin County Selectments Association uh, meeting, which we were all at. Uh, and we had a uh, legislative update. We had Joe Comerford there. We had uh, Natalie Belay, Mark uh, Paul Mark, um, John Robertson from MMA. John uh, Gould was, and John there. John Gould from uh, from uh, Hines Senator Hines' office. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, it was very interesting. Their update. The, the state seems to be in pretty good shape. We'll see how things go moving forward. Um, that was a good meeting. Uh, the attendance wasn't wasn't as good as I would hoped it would be, but um, yeah, there was some good information passed at that meeting. They lassoed me into joining the transportation. That's right. They so they this is yes, my they, first time of being harnessed. Hey, <laughs> so it's you, good. It's something I'm interested. In. Yes. You'll have fun. You'll have Good. fun. Uh, public comment. I don't see any of the public here, so we don't have any public comments. Old business. Uh, we need to extend the agreement with um, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments for procurement services. Um, that's something we do each year. Well, th this in, in particular is for work on the highway, uh, the maintenance facility. So uh, we had our original agreement with them uh, was actually running out this at the end of the year, uh -huh. and we uh, are not quite as far along in the process as we thought we might be at this point. So uh, uh, we're proposing to extend it to March first. Uh, so extend the months. current agreement, not yes. pass the new. Yeah. Agreement. So the only yes. thing we're changing on it is the amendment that extends it from uh, yeah. twelve thirty one to uh, March 1st, is that the way that should be? Yeah. Okay, all right, uh, shown below, okay. All right, um, any questions on that? I would move we do it. Okay, I, I would uh, second that motion. Phil, yes, I have yes. everybody in agreement with that? <laughs> yes. Okay, all right. So what all are they, they doing? I mean, I know that they do procurement more. Uh, yeah, they'll do uh, all the bidding for the, uh, for the yeah. maintenance facility. Yeah. Once the designs are in, which we're hoping it's going to be, well, is imminent. Okay. So there's there, there a lot of requirements for a project that size. The next item on the agenda is the agreement with Nexamp for 
decommissioning the solar energy system and reclamation of the solar energy system site. Okay. This was a requirement that the planning board uh, right. had as a, for giving them their special permit. Right. Uh, and <clears throat> this has been reviewed uh, by town council, okay. as has the associated decommissioning bond. Okay. Uh, so we are ready to to sign the, uh, the decommissioning agreement, which will then allow them to move forward at the state level and, and wait for the state to <laughs> move forward. Yeah. And any questions on this? No. No. Okay. Uh, I'll move good work. that we, we good work sign, sign the agreement for decommissioning of the solar energy <coughs> system and the reclamation of the solar energy system site with with um, Conway Solar LLC, which is basically a a, um, a com an Exam company, uh, and and the TAM. I do I have a second? second. All in favor? Yes. Hi. Okay. I'll sign this right after we finish. Next one is the license for John and Jan Mags to conduct a business for buying and selling antiques. Um, this is a yearly license that we renew. Do we have any questions? No. Okay, I'll make a motion that we sign uh, this uh, license for uh, John and Jan Max to sell, doing business as J and J Max at two uh, Old Cricket Hill Road in Conway, uh, for a permit to buy and sell antiques, and that extends uh, until December thirty first, twenty twenty. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Have we caught up with all of these? I, I, it seems like we, yeah. we've had a number and then we're not, we don't have them all quite ready or they're not filled out right. So. Yeah. yeah, we're all Great. Up. This should be the last one. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item, snow day pay policy discussion. Thomas? Uh, you should all have gotten a copy of this. Yeah. Um, we don't really have a policy. And it's, um, I, I would find it helpful to have some guidelines. Um, there are a number of concerns. Um, we need to keep employees safe. We want to give the highway workers space to clear roads. Uh, we want to give sufficient notice to employees. And we need a policy for compensation for involuntary leave. If we say stay home, what does that mean? Uh, so, uh, on some thoughts on closure. Um, I'm I'm recommending uh, that the town close its offices when there is a statewide closure, uh, when the Conway Grammar School is closed. Um, conceivably, we could close earlier than the local school if localized severe weather were forecast, but I'm kind of wondering what counts as severe enough because we all know forecasts don't always line up. Um, we should close if the highway superintendent needs the roads to be free of private vehicles, but that might mean of just a delay. Um, or uh, when bad precipitation is forecast, not necessarily in the morning, but when people would be going home. So we need to be able to think about that. Um, then um, I asked a, a number of neighboring towns if um, employees get paid for snow days and they say um, uh, Shelburne says if there's a state of emergency if there's a if the governor declares a state of emergency um, and all non-essential personnel are to stay off the roads employees are compensated 
Um, Williamsburg says, we do the same as Shelburne, except the town administrator has been given the authority to close the building during the day if the storm persists. So that has to do with the evening commute. And then if that gets closed, empo employees are compensated in Williamsburg. Um, Ashfield, uh, yes, staff gets paid if the town officially closes or has a delay. Um, they also have a little bit of a fluid process. We have an, ex an entirely fluid process. Um, and then uh, Goshen is that everybody's part time in, well, there are three full time employees in Goshen, all of whom are in the highway department and work during inclement weather anyway. Um, everyone else just, if they don't feel they can come in safely, they don't come in and then they make up their hours at some other point. Um, so that's the that's how Goshen manages their their part time people. Uh, and then I had the pay recommendation. If there was a statewide emergency, we're automatically closed with pay. Um, and I would say if if you wanted to adopt the policy, if there was a local school closure, the town would also be closed. Um, I would add that. Um, and then. If you wanted to give me local authority to close with pay, I would confer with the highway superintendent and the select board chair before 8 a.m. and communicate to everybody who's scheduled to work in the office by 8 a.m. Uh, the Board of Health is going to have to determine their own transfer station situation. Mm -hmm. And then um, if we don't, we would still allow people to uh, stay home if they wanted to use personal or vacation time or, or make up that time later. I, I like that recommendation. I, I would concur with that. With the uh, with that enclosure of the, uh, the school closing. Yeah. What do you right, think? Right, you don't, no. don't mention the school closing in Yeah, I, I, yeah I, we, didn't, we, I, I had... Uh, that could be so, you know more automatic. You shouldn't have to call if the school is closed. The schools have to close based on the condition of the most isolated, desolate dirt road in town. And that's not, mm. um, you know, our concern is the state highway. So, you know, if anything, number one, if it's a statewide emergency, I get that. But, um, and if they want to use personal or vacation time just like any other day, um, I get that. But everything else, um, no. No, thank you. you know, there's a couple things about this. So first of all, you should know that every single contract cycle, you are to your unions um, at the school ask to be compensated for snow days. Sure <clears throat> they do. Yeah. And um, we have always said no. So conferring a benefit on your non-unionized employees when you say no in contract negotiations to your union employees is always problematic come contra contract time, which one of you two is going to find out next time. Um, uh, but so, so that's number one, and it's like really problematic that stuff because this is number one annual ask, and we've we've negotiated around the, the edges with that sort of thing, and set up a system where most of the time we're able to cancel school long enough in advance, say the night before, that they can have a sort of orderly day and not have to get up and wait by the phone and all that, so that at least it doesn't mess people up too much. Mm -hmm. Um, and we should have a policy that we make a call like that or, you know, if there's any type of communication to, that, that it should be the night before just for people's, to, just to be good to people instead mm -hmm. of just holding them till the morning of. Um, but, and the other thing is that there's a cost to this yeah, that, that could be estimated that should be included in the proposal. How many times have uh, we, you know, what, what's the cost to the town of this providing a benefit like this? The second thing is that um, we should have your department heads uh, uh, surveyed on this type of thing because in particular the highway department that's got five employees, if they have a medium snowstorm, they call two or three in and there's two or three that, stay, that, that aren't called in. But under, uh, under something, you have to make sure that the two or three that aren't called in are getting paid, or aren't getting paid to sit at home when we're making people come in to, to earn that same. So, the, you know, I, you know. I, I don't think we, we do that with our highway department. We don't, we don't 
say hey, it, three it, people come in, two people say on. Well, we're, and we're and if we did, they would board. they would be the ones getting the overtime. The other people would would still work their regular shift. But but, that, but the people who worked would be getting overtime. So I think something so like kind of the, the something the like this. I think it's really important to get the feedback of the department heads whose department mm -hmm. would be most affected by this to see whether it would have a good impact, a neutral impact, or a bad impact. And um. All right, I, I don't want to overanalyze this either. Well, you know. Well, um, it's fine. It's just what I'm looking for yeah, is a discussion yeah, yeah. so that then I can, you know, refine it's it. It's just asking a you know. Oh, um, yeah. That, that's but, exactly what I want. But in, in yeah. general, the concept of paying hourly employees to not work, you know, is, is um, especially when you're... Uh, well, yeah, you know, I think, yeah, yeah. I think our, our, our main focus here is the safety of our employees coming to work. And that's the state. So I, I think we, the, the policy should be the state emergency, don't show up and everybody gets paid, I, I'm okay with that um, because you, you're, you're, you're directing them not to show up and using people's personal or vacation time if they're afraid to drive, that's okay too. All right, so we're talking about number one and three yeah. only. You, you mentioned that, that, that if, if the road crew wanted the roads cleared, uh, when, when does that happen? In the, general, if they're plowing, they don't like to have people driving on the roads that they're plowing. But they usually, you know, if the snow is over the night, they can get it cleaned they up the, yeah. before people start driving. If it's, and that's, that's one of the big sticking points is what happens during the day. You know, because things can be fine in the morning. Um, this last snowstorm, it was slippery but drivable in the morning but then in the afternoon it turned to sleet and ice and there was a period when it was not good to drive so that's the kind of you know nuance that i'm looking at and why you know i'm thinking you know how much of a risk do we want to ask people to take if we just leave it up to them um that's okay but if somebody you know is needing the money because our hourly people are all part-time as well well not the highway department but they have to work um but ron doesn't actually close the roads and so i don't imagine our right, conway employees right. are enough are enough people to affect whether how clear the roads are you know right right and and you know we have some odd odd situations we have an employee who comes in from orange you know and sometimes the weather can be completely different there mm -hmm. than here so and you know with the child in school if if they close their schools yeah. then she has to you know mm -hmm. make make those sorts of arrangements but that's you know that that's the sort of odd situation that has been coming up that made me think what we need is a more formal policy. And the other thing is that it can, be, it can be in the policy that you can encourage employees and their department heads to uh, the night before the anticipated storm or the day before an anticipated storm event to work on um, work bags or bat home bags for just to disseminate a few tasks that could be completed at home. At home, yeah. Um, um, and which would be which is another way that this, because that's the same, the schools do the same thing with all their hourly employees, if there's things that you can do. But how, how many days last year did we close the office? Maybe, maybe one and maybe, a half? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I, something like that. The, the point is just to be fair and clear about what's expected, mm -hmm. I think, mainly. Yeah, so and, if, be, if, and besides, you know, you can have a situation where, where we may have a foot of snow, and over Boston, nothing happens. So you know, it's not a statewide emergency, but it's certainly an emergency here. You know. So there's, um, there's, there's, it's not all black and white here. There's, there's a lot of gray area. That's 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 the way everything is. Mm -hmm. to, um, uh, I, I would say if, if, if you're looking to do more than what, whatever, that, uh, that I would want the department head surveyed and let's get more information yeah. and make sure that what we're doing is what they, what, it, it makes it easier to run the town government, not harder. All right, maybe get some more yeah. information. On. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, good. Sure, I have enough to come up with a second.
Okay, next item on the agenda is signed certificates of the town academy attendees. Okay, I think we've we've done that. Uh, and, the, and the cover letters, if anybody missed them. Yeah, yeah I think we yeah, have. We have. Them. Yeah. Uh, and the next item is uh, under new business is to support the Mass Woodlands Partnership Program grant proposal through the Franklin Regional Council of Governments for Town Forest Management Plan. They're working with four towns now uh, who are part of the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership because there are these sort of town forest grants. And uh, I threw our name into the hat because why not get a free forest management plan? Uh, the, the proposal calls for two public meetings and two meetings with the select board, which I think is a, a good number to get, you know, town input for, for what people want to do with the town forest. Other groups, you know, I've been encouraging the open space committee as well to consider, um, you know, long-term forest management as part of the open space committee's brief as well. Uh, but and I've kept um, I've kept uh, Janet Shays in the loop about this uh, this grant proposal, which she she also supports. Uh, so seemed like an opportunity. I signed up. It's moving kind of quickly. Um, I'm not sure exactly when the deadline is, but it may be in a couple of weeks. Who are the other towns? Uh, Buckland and Ashfield, right. and I'm not sure what the fourth town is. I think the fourth town was not. Um, might have wanted a slightly different plan. And, and this is organized by the partnership, not by FERCOG? Well, it's organized. This particular grant proposal round is being organized by the FERCOG, but it it's is. being mm -hmm. offered by the partnership. So it's a benefit of having been designated, you know, a town that is part of the partnership. That we have the way we're eligible to apply for the grant. And we have two town forests. We have the one on the Fournier property and we have the, the old town forest up by the uh, town cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a plan done for the Fournier property um, quite some time ago. Uh, I'm thinking 15 years ago, maybe. I, and I believe that was mostly really a logging plan that was successfully carried out and there was a sale of timber and all of that. Um, there, this is now being pitched more as a forest stewardship plan with uh, a lot of concentration to habitat and long-term forest management. So, um, and, you know, maybe they'll help us uh, do we have consultation in how that, I mean, is, does the forester come in and present that plan, or can oh. we participate? Oh, well, again, there are those two public meetings and yeah. two meetings with the select board Great. Yeah. where uh, people can express their priorities for, you know, how they want the forest management plan, uh, where they want its focus to be. You know, there are some that are simply cutting plans, and there are some that are much more you know, detailed about, you know, enhancing, you know, whatever the, that particular piece of woods has in it. Um, you know, there's usually some clearing because, you know, to allow the trees, the hardwood trees you want and all of that sort of thing. So I think that's the kind of nuance we're talking about in, in these plants. Don't, I, like, I get I get everything they do, but then it says scope of work. We're going to hire a, a forester. He's going to come up with the plan. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's. I wouldn't expect the fur to come up with the plan themselves. Well, I mean, as long as we're going to. That That's what we get for meet the with management. With the forester, and there's going to be public hearings to talk about what the town wants to do. I mean, yeah, they're, they're managing all the logistics, including getting the content done. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's that's what we're giving them their administrative fee for. Other questions? Okay. We're all set? All right, I'll make a motion that we support the uh, 
the Mass Woodlands Partnership Program grant proposal through the Franklin Regional Council of Governments for Did you mean the Mohawk Town Trail Forest Land? Management Plan. Yeah, Mohawk Trail. Yeah, Mohawk Woodlands yeah, Partnership. The, the, it's the Mohawk Trail Woodlands oh, Partnership. Oh, sorry, not Mass. Whatever. Yeah, it's different than what. Right. Yeah. Saying. Okay. Mohawk Trails Woodlands Partnership. Right. Okay. I'll second. Sorry. It. All right. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. <coughs> All right. Next item is to. Um, Review the draft budget meeting schedule. Tom? It's pretty much copied from last year. <coughs> the dates. Um, the, the real questions will be, are there departments that you particularly want to hear from who are not represented here? Um, as we might have expected, I did not get all the budgets in by the deadline, which was on Friday. Um, and I, I got some more in. Uh, today uh, from over the weekend. Uh, these are, you know, the usual larger departments. The only smaller ones uh, would be, say, Parks and Rec or Open Space or other people who have active programs that they're managing. Haven't gotten Parks and Recs yet. Uh, might be interesting to bring them in and talk with them about what they're doing. Um, it's true with everybody, I think. And, you know, we have some committees that have $100 in their budget, and we have Parks and Rec has more mm -hmm. has 8000 this year. So that's where it begins to get, you know, a little... Uh, I, I think this this is the same schedule as we followed last year. And yeah. last year went very well. Yeah. Again, if, if there are, you know, and I hear some interest for, for Parks and Rec, um, we'll certainly get all that information anyway, and then we can, we can see there's... Um, it... There's uh, certainly time on the 27th, on the 3rd, and, and really ongoing. Um, uh, you know, I have, I have a, a, a wish for a preliminary school budget discussion on February 18th. You know what? You might get um, your wish this year, and that's serious. Well, that, that, um, that, that's that, good. That, the Chapter 70 um, uh, yeah. re re reform thing included some earlier no, uh, requirements for the state to provide information mm, or good. else provide explanations why they're not. Mm. So we are told that this year, for real, we're going to get actual numbers by the end of January that might be relevant. Okay, so, good. Well, the governor only presents his budget you yep. know, towards the end of January, so... Mm -hmm. uh, I guess what they're going to give you is the governor's budget numbers, and then of course, that that's you know that's all we really have to go on. The house often comes out with their budget fairly soon after, um, but and it's always, you know, different in some ways, and then the senate comes out and that's different, and then it it kind of converges back toward the governor's budget, you know, by the end usually, you know. Details may differ, you know. So it, 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 it is really all as, as good an estimate as we can make. But, you know, if they're able to go off the governor's budget, then that's great. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I, I like this schedule. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Next item is to uh, assign the voting delegate for the Meyer annual meeting. Tom, you're the delegate, correct? Uh, I have been in the past. Well, and then I, I would be. I see no reason happy why to be not to have you as uh, the yeah, delegate. I am planning on going, so that's good. Any any uh, questions or concerns about that? Not 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 enough to <laughs> not enough to say anything about it. Okay, <laughs> good. Then I'll make a motion. You get a free lunch if you go. You, you uh, could get a free lunch. See, anyway. I was thinking you about it, but my, my relations moved from Acton to Marblehead, and Acton was an easy T ride away, and Marblehead is a T plus a bus plus a long walk. We're, we're going to assign Tom, okay? We're going to assign Tom because he's been doing it. He knows the the uh, the, 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 the landscape. It's, it's really just you. Yeah. It, okay. It's a day. And and anybody can actually who's coming can get into the lunch too if anybody does want to do that so well last year we had a nice Western which is really the point lunch yeah. oh okay yeah yeah all right this isn't about lunch oh it's it tremendously important i'll second your motion no i i'm making a motion that we, we, we assign tom as the voting delegate for the maya annual meeting do i have a second 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 all in favor. Aye. Okay. And thank you Good. For Unanimous. Doing that.
Good. That's good. Unanimous. 3-0. Okay. Uh, items not anticipated, Thomas. Uh, I have one that's based on a piece of mail, which you have... Um, right, and that, that we have. And, that I we don't, have but and that we have a letter for. Uh -huh. Yes, so, yeah. that, so that's... Here, a, here's yeah. the, here's the, the um, mail from one of our residents that is dealing with a very important issue, and we have a letter to sign uh -huh. for that. Okay. Uh, this, yeah, this is uh, requesting those uh, uh, larger and brighter bus stops signs yeah. by the Greenfield Savings Bank. Uh, this is a letter officially we asking... We talked about this, was it two weeks yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and uh, it, was, it was earlier than that, and I apologize, I think it dropped off my plate. Um, the thing that we had to do was to officially ask Mass DOT to do it, and I said I would come up with a letter and get it to you, and now I have. We have a letter here. Great. And I would, I would, yep, I've, I've got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, what, what's the, uh, oh, this, it, yeah. You want to include this, uh, yeah, I say there's an attachment, so. Okay. Just as an example. Now, which, which one do you want to sign? You want to sign this one or this one? Well, it, might as, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, and this has to do with that letter, which you know about. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we sign this letter to, uh, uh, the Director of Highway, uh, our district, uh, Francesca Henning, uh, to get these signs put up by the uh, Greenfield Savings Bank on Route 116. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Tom, you have an update for us? Yes, I do. <coughs> yeah. uh, in committee news, the Board of Health reports that the impact of the new materials recovery facility <coughs> is going to cost the town an increase of $18,364 mm. to process recycled material. Waste management will want that well, will want that much to process the recycling going forward and there are many other nuances and considerations that will have to take place. Uh, they note that you're going to have to sign the contract by the end of January 2020 in order for the town to get on board and that is before the FY21 budget is passed. Uh, they do not have all the materials yet to do a presentation to the select board, but request time at a board meeting in the near future to help you understand this new contract. I think we're going for um, January 6th, the next meeting, uh, which ha also has Ron uh, presenting his highway department budget. Right, right, okay. Uh, but he's the only thing. So they're gonna, they're gonna talk about this particular item at that meeting. Uh, in departmental news, uh, with the expected formal addition of an existing de facto policy requiring pre-employment physicals, I expect to institute full firefighter pre-employment <coughs> physicals for the fire department. Um, because of the risks inherent in the job, I believe we should all re also require the full firefighter physical for all existing personnel as well as new hires going forward so as to create a realistic baseline. Okay, so we don't do any um, pre-employment physicals now for the fire department? We do, but there is a special one for public safety officials. And so there's one that's geared to firefighters. Um, it's more expensive, considerably more expensive. Um, and I'm still considering exactly how to budget for that. Okay. Uh, I think it would probably be worthwhile to get everybody one of them right away, mm -hmm. uh, which means a one-time hit uh, and then trickling down because it's, well, counted as a pre-employment physical, but it'll just be a baseline for going forward. That is, it would not be an annual event. So from right. then it would just be people who were coming on board. So this, mm -hmm. this, is, this is the other thing that came out of the personnel, what, whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I don't get this at all. If if you're, it, 
what's the point of doing a physical if you still don't, uh, unless you have a policy that says if you fail the physical, you don't get hired or you don't get promoted. But we're not doing that. There's no policy that says that if there's no policy purpose in having the physical, then there's no point in having the physical. Um, well, the first point is that they're either cleared to work or they're not. The physical is the policy. If they, if the physical comes back and says they're not cleared to work as a firefighter, <coughs> then we're not going to hire them as a firefighter. So that's that's where that comes in. But they're volunteers. And, but they're volunteers. And yes, but we don't want them keeling over in the middle of a of a call either. Um, beyond that, it establishes whether there are pre-existing conditions, and. That's very important uh, for various considerations going forward, partly because of the presumptions that are made uh, with various diseases that firefighters can get, uh, wherein they're presumed to have gotten them on the job. Uh, so they, they may they... or may not apply to call firefighters. Mo uh, some of them only apply to full-time firefighters, but some, for some of it, there isn't case law. So... Um, so yes. there, it's there, a good idea for establishing so you, a baseline you for think, health. You think That's the, why we do it for all employees. So you think the fire department physical does breathing tests where they measure people's breath so that future claims in, in that, because that's what all those health claims are about, is right. ruin lung capacity. But those fire, those tests don't, don't do baseline tests of lung capacity for people. I think that firefighter physicals do that. They're they special. do? I think so, yeah. yeah. They, because that's what people come back and they... They claim that their problem was caused on the job, and that could be very well the case. So, 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 so using it for existing personnel, where you think that that you, that, that, that will establish the baseline, the baseline for, baseline. for yeah. all of our employees, and I think it's important to go back and do that for the firefighters as well, <coughs> because of the increased and liability. What, what does the fire chief think of this? There, there are are new laws coming out from the state about, you know, presumption about certain job classifications. And, and I think it's a good idea for us to get uh, a baseline for our fighter fighters. He had originally, the chief had originally brought up the question related to junior firefighters. And uh, that was the original question that I took to the personnel committee. And they said, well, of course they should. If they're actually working for the town, they should get it. And then I asked, you know, the the small town administrators, do you guys do, you know, for on-call firefighters, do you just do the regular physical or do you do the full firefighter? They all said they do the full firefighter, which was kind of surprising to me because it is more expensive. Um, but uh, so it's, it's the norm. Because uh, and, and like when, when, when you applied it to the kids too, like, when, when, you, when you say to teenagers that can't drive, can't suit up, can't do all these things, they're just sort of, be, they're, they're still just supporters, or they'll use a shovel or something like that. But the, Well, I think you meant the junior firefighters, when they become members of the town. No, or, no, when they become employees of the town. Uh, but junior firefighters? Are employees of the town. But... And we are responsible and liable for their health. But for, for, the, for those people, when you say get a physical, you're saying parents take this person and get a physical, drive them back and forth and do all that. And, but, but they have a physical every year for, for going to school. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's different. It's different from being a town employee. And, um, you know, they have certain jobs that do require them to be physically active and no, they're not full-fledged firefighters. Uh, so, you know, uh, I have just said, you know, I'm, I'm taking the position of, of maximum protection for the town at this point, and if, if, you know, but you're the guys who set the policy. The, the other thing was that, uh, again, a, you know, we, that before you adopt policies like this, the cost estimate should be fleshed out, where it's going to be in the budget should be known, the impact on different departments should be known, department heads should be advised and consented and um, yeah. all that yeah. sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, 
I am fully prepared to go through all of that. This is my recommendation and, and my report here. And yeah, I'll, I, I'll definitely have those figures when we talk about public safety. Do you know how Bob feels or how his chief lieutenant Well, I've let him know, feels? yeah. Well, um, I'm, yeah. The nuances, you know, are, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating, well, it's a good thing to get everybody checked out. Um, it's, it's a lot of money for the town, um, but it's good to feel supported, but we don't want anybody, like, kicked off, but, right, right, you know, so, right. you know, as you were saying before, so, uh, you know, I'm... Yeah, our concern it's here. Something that I'm thinking about that I brought to the personnel committee that I'm reporting to you. Yeah, our, at our this concern point. here has and to be. And I'm reporting to you with the best information that I have now, and I'm not expecting this to be the final word in the process. Our concern here has to be you know, what's the liability to the town? Yeah. Because of, of some of these new laws that are coming into effect at the state level that, that um, you know, could really cause some significant. Um, long-term liability for the town. And I think uh, a pre-employment physical and a physical for everybody who's in this position at the town right now as a baseline is pretty important moving forward. Because it may cost us something now, but it could save us a lot of money in the long run. Yes, and, and I promise this will be an agenda item. I'm just reporting on the personnel right. committee right now. That's my belief. Okay, next item. Uh, I'm working with the ambulance director on job descriptions for FERC and first responder as those were not active when we had the job descriptions done and she'd like to distinguish their roles and compensation from EMTs. <coughs> I met with Maya's risk management staff and I'm working with them and the highway supervisor on some risk management activities which could bring Maya's driving simulator into town and give all town staff who drive municipal vehicles the chance to see what driving their vehicles is like in various conditions. Um, and they have a whole bunch of different vehicles programmed into it and a whole bunch of different conditions. Hmm. And apparently um, it can be fun. <laughs> Terry Walker, the new highway clerk, is applying for a grant from the federal government for funds gained from the Volkswagen settlement. Conway could get over half a million dollars for highway trucks and equipment. Well, we don't know what anybody's going to get, um, but there is money set aside for municipalities, and um, she was eager to apply for the grant and is in the process of doing that now. Dangerous to throw out numbers like that, though. Um, I plan to work with the chair to set up time soon for renegotiating my contract. I'll look for that on future agendas. Okay. Uh, in other news, Paula led <coughs> to the Conway Grammar School Moves and Grooves Committee, notified the town that she would like to hold the annual 5K fun run or walk through the center of Conway on Sunday, May 17th, 2020. The race is scheduled to start at 9 a.m. and end by 11 with some time beforehand to set up. The route would be the same as last year, and she also notes that the event is only for school families. Uh, we have received the FY2020 wage and salary survey from the FERCOG. Uh, a copy of it, a paper copy of it is here for your review, and I have an electronic copy if you'd like to receive that. Dude, I thought it was really difficult to make sense of that they didn't do medians or averages, they just did town after town after town, and then you had to sit down with because a calculator. Because every town's different, and all the benefits are different, and all they, they that. Did, they did no analysis of the numbers whatsoever. So did you a lot, send out a, a lot of variables? To us? It's raw. It's probably. raw data, Phil. Raw data. I th I think I did. Did didn't did I send some? Uh, you got it. I got it. Okay. okay. Yeah. It was an enormous digital file. <coughs> um. send it out to you again, Bob. Thank uh, and finally, there was a diesel spill of up to 60 gallons from an oil delivery truck from the Dead River Company on Main Poland Road on Thursday, mm. December 12th. DEP was notified and the company is responsible for all the mediation. Okay, okay. thank you, Tom. 
Uh, next item, concerns of the selectmen. Do you have any concerns, gentlemen? No. I had a lot of, uh, there was numerous people that did not, that claimed, numerous employees that were upset that they didn't, according to them, they did not get notification of the town party. The, okay. uh, the transfer station fellas, the, the health department, um, and uh, your const our constables um, uh, was what he, he, he was upset that he wasn't told, so he could have put it on the electronic uh, uh, machine there. Um, uh, but so I'm just reporting what they all said, and then uh, also the uh, concerns by the members of the staff at the health department, the transfer station, um, as well as the head of the health department about. The relative roles of the highway department versus the health department when yeah, it comes to yeah, clearing that's, snow. That, that's being and, taken care of between the highway super and and well, the, that's what they the, said. They the said board it chair. They said that it's not being taken care well, of. Well, okay, and, that, that, that's that's between the highway department and and the the board of health chair, and that's that's being taken care of. Um, I got the same complaint. I, I told, about safe access to the metal thing and. I, I, it's being taken care of. Anything else? Uh, wait, what, what else was there? Shoot. Yeah. I'll say It'll wait. Okay. All right, mail. Uh, the other item we got in the mail was the Franklin Regional Council of Governments uh, Municipal Officials Workshop. Um, there's a, um, on Thursday the 9th from 6 to 8, there is a safety planning for town, offices, libraries, and other municipal workplaces. Okay. And there was that letter from the second letter from Barbara Ware that we discussed earlier about the, the school school bus signs. Right. Okay, we took care of that with the letter. Yeah. 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 yeah well, okay. But it was mail, so I thought I'd mention. Right. Yeah. But we got we got the letter that we're doing, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's about that letter. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, next meeting is scheduled for Monday, January six, here at the uh, town office at six p.m. And after that, they're once a week, every Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, is there any other business to come before the board? Okay, not hearing any, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Aye.